Praise the Lord. And this occurred after being with the Lord. It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it means without the renewal of the mind, transformation becomes impossible. Hallelujah. The lot of questions in the heart of people today is caused by the absence of a renewal of mind. Hallelujah. Amen. The other time we were discussing our Sunday school about people forgetting about the coming of the Lord Jesus. About people saying they, we have been hearing that Jesus is coming soon for over 2,000 years. He has not come. A mind that is transformed understand what is, ha- what is happening. Understand the patience that God has. Understand that the will of God is that the scripture will preach to every end of the earth. And that God is trying all he can do to see if this person will not go to hell. If that person will not go to hell. Hallelujah. Amen. I have explained by the grace of God a kind of conformation. But the real kind of conformity that I want us to look at today is the conformity that we have in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is so dangerous because it can go on unannounced. It can go on unknown. Hallelujah. So, the one we are talking about not being conformed to the world is conformity outside the church. Now, conformity within the church is so dangerous. Why? It is dangerous for me to think that God knows me when he doesn't know me. It is dangerous for me to think I am saved when I have not encountered Christ. It is dangerous for me to think I am born again when I am still living in sin. Hallelujah. Amen. And the conformity that we have, it is not the fault of some people. If I was born into a Muslim family, probably I would have still been a Muslim today. Because I would just grow up following my parents to the mosque and learning what is being taught and believing it to be true. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we have people, Christians, who are born into a Christian family. And from their childhood time, they began following their parents to church. And by reason, probably because they are the children of the pastor or children of an orchard, they join choir or they join the people that are in the church. And as that goes on, they see themselves, they perceive themselves to be Christians. They perceive themselves to have met the Lord. It is not their fault. They grew, they grew up like that. They found themselves in that position. Hallelujah. Amen. And that kind of people, they become so familiar with God that it becomes difficult to now understand the reality of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Another group of people. By reason of influence, by reason of friends, you were not a Christian before you moved to another city. 
when you move into the city, you were lucky to fall into the hands of believers. And they took you as friends. And they took you to church. By reason of the way they behave, you tend to do what they do and try not to do what they don't do. So on Sunday, you follow them to church. In the morning, they wake up to read their Bible. You say, ah, you also do the same. Your room is the next room to this brother's room. You hear him singing in the morning, and you do the same. So you are conforming to the life of a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. We have another dangerous one. There are people when they want to get married, they know that the best man you can marry is a man who has experienced God. They know that the best lady you can marry and have a sweet home is that lady who has experienced God. So, when they are ready for marriage, irrespective of whatever they have done before, they come to the church and they are searching to meet that person who has experienced God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, for them to be able to catch what they want, they have to behave like what they want. So that the sister or the brother will see them as who he or she desires. So, that is also a form of conformity. They try to conform. Hallelujah. Amen. But this does not translate to salvation. That is why it is dangerous. It will be so painful for you to think that you have been in the church for 17 years and you are being a Sunday school teacher. And on the judgment day, and he says, I don't know you. You walk out of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there is a step that must be taken to become a Christian. And irrespective for whatever we do, and that's why we have a lot of unbelievers that are philanthropists. They see that God is a merciful God. Even if I'm a wicked person, even if I'm an unbeliever, I divide my wealth into two. Let me give half to the church. God should understand that ah, I have given half of my wealth to church. God should reason with me and pardon me. But that doesn't occur except there is a surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. It cannot be permutated. It cannot be. You can't skip it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. So, a lot has been said about conforming to the world, and that's why we are trying to play emphasis on conforming even while we are in the church. Second Timothy 3 verse 5. Yes, please. Then we act religious make them godly. Hallelujah. Stay away from people like that. Hallelujah. The, their behavior, even the pastor may think that this person is born again. Mm -hmm. But they have never experienced Christ. They have that courage. They have that charisma. 
to act as a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. But they have not experienced the power. Salvation is a power experience. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewal of the mind is a change of mindset. Repentance itself is a change of mindset. Because whatever we do, whatever we bring up as a behavior is what we have thought about in our heart. Mm -hmm. So, repentance, which is changing your ways, is first changing your mindset. Changing your thought. Renewal of the mind. So, be transformed by the renewal of the mind. And people have chosen conformity as against transformation because to conform is easier. It's an easier way. Just behave like this person. Whereas, transformation is a process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 